Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So many a times we think that in order to become rich, we have to learn about investing or we need to go and start thinking about raising money and starting our own business. Well, nothing of that sort. If you are in a job and if you can learn high impact, high value skills, you are going to make a lot of money. You will have a natural response that Akshat, you are making your money on YouTube. Then how are you qualified to say that you can actually get rich by doing a job? Well, just to set some context, I graduated from INSEAD. I joined a management consulting company. And if I would have stayed in that management consulting company, now I would have been a partner. Now, please go and Google that how much money do partners at BCG, Bain, McKinsey, Dalberg make. And you will be surprised that they make a lot of money. So from that context, I'm speaking that, you know what, since I was able to get a high impact job, I was progressing in that job. Yes, I made a conscious decision to quit, start my own businesses. That's the path that I chose to get rich. But if I would have still continued with my job, I would have made a lot of money. So with that spirit in mind, on this video, I'm going to help you demystify 11 most critical skills according to me. And more importantly, I'm going to tell you how to improve upon those 11 key critical skills. If you go and Google, simply type out that, you know, what a high value impact skills in the corporate world, you will get like a generic BS stuff. For example, according to Harvard, it is like you need to have like data analysis skills. You also need to have product management and financial accounting skills. See, with all, so on this video, I'm going to help you pick practical skills. And irrespective of the type of job you are in, you can learn these 11 practical skills and make more money. So let's kickstart our video and just a humble request that if you want me to make these career oriented videos, do press the like button. It will indicate to me that you would like me to make these type of career oriented content and it will act as a feedback mechanism. So let's kickstart and the first critical skill that you need to learn is called as effective communication. So what is the meaning of effective communication? Okay, so in very easy to understand terms, it means that you are saying 10 things and the other person is able to understand 9 or 10 things that you are saying. That is what effective communication means. It does not mean hi-fi English or Shashi Tharoor like vocabulary or really good accent. All that is not the meaning of effective communication. Effective communication in the corporate world simply means that you are going and speaking to your subordinates or you are going and speaking with your boss. You are able to express whatever you are saying in very clear, concise manner. There is so much miscommunication in the corporate world and I was able to understand only this and I ended up doing this. It was his fault. It was her fault. And the boss says, Ki no, nahi aaya. what did I say? So half of the fights that happen in the corporate world is because of the fact that the communication is somewhat misguided. Now, one of the key messages that you will hear from CEOs and all these big, big bosses is very simple that always over communicate. Bhai, itna simplify karke bata do ki Right? So you need to simplify your message to the point that there is no miscommunication left. So this is what they stress on and this is the importance of effective communication. Now if you are someone who is very clear in terms of the way you communicate, what ends up happening is that you end up saving a lot of time not only for yourself but also of your teammates, also of your boss. And what is your boss more worried about? Well, A, what is your performance like? And second is that how much of his or her time you are able to save. So being effective in the way you communicate becomes a very, very important point. Now also thinking about from another aspect in the corporate world, what you might be doing is that you might be writing emails, you might be speaking with your teammates, you might be giving presentations. So this is like a verbal, audio, visual type of communication. So the communication can happen in written format. It can happen in audio or video format. So you need to be prepared for all these different styles of communication. But to cut the long story short, effective communication is an evergreen skill. Chat GPT is not going to take away that skill from you. If you are someone who is able to develop effective communication skills, you are going to do fairly well in your corporate career. So now comes the natural question that, okay, fine. I want to develop effective communication. What is it that I should do? So, okay, I can create pretty much a two hour video on that, but let me be very efficient and tell you three, four tips, right? And let's reverse engineer it. If you want to be an effective communicator, what specifically is it that you are looking to improve upon? Well, you are looking to improve upon your written skills. Also, you are looking to improve upon your speaking skills. So these are two areas that you're looking to improve upon. So see, here is the flowchart that if you're able to think really well, then you will be able to write really well. 
If you are able to write really well, then you will be able to explain things really well. So automatically your speaking will also improve. So that is the flow chart which you need to follow. If you just simply keep on practicing speaking, you might be a fluent English speaker, but that would not mean that you are an effective communicator. To become an effective communicator, A, you need to improve your thinking quality and B, you need to improve upon your writing quality. And from there on, automatically, your speaking quality will also improve. So this is the flowchart. Now comes the natural question that how exactly can I improve upon it? Well, a lot of strategies, but if you have to think really well, then my advice would be that don't focus on reading like 500 books a year. Please focus on reading maybe like two books, but think about it, ponder about it, absorb what is written on the book. Why the author has used shorter sentences? Why not longer sentences? How exactly a sentence was framed? So all these basic, basic things you need to pick up. This will only happen when you focus on quality rather than quantity. So first key tip is that whenever you are reading books, please read only one or two books a year. That's it. You don't need to read more. You need to absorb That's how the author has communicated things. And from there on, you need to develop your own style of writing and speaking. When it comes to speaking, it's a slightly different ball game. Speaking or improvement in speaking comes when you put yourself in high stake situation. For example, if you just keep speaking with your friend, again, you can become like a slightly more fluent speaker. No doubt about that. It's good for practice. But unless you put yourself in high stress situation, for example, if you speak at the Toastmasters club or if you are speaking on a stage in some capacity, those are high stress, high stake situations. Once you go through those situations, it gives you more confidence. So I hope that this gives you at least a direction in which you need to think if you want to become a more effective communicator. Now comes the second skill, which is called as corporate storytelling. Now this is a slightly advanced version of effective communication. Now effective communication simply means that you are trying to speak more clearly with your colleagues. Now, what is corporate storytelling? Well, to cut the long story short, many a times you would have seen that when you start giving a presentation, people around you, they just sleep, right? Now, why do they sleep? A, because they were corporate workers, overworked, bunch of other different things. So anyways, they do not have interest. On top of them, if you are giving them a boring presentation, it acts like a sleeping pill. So from that perspective, it becomes important to understand that whenever you are creating any kind of message, it needs to be told in a story format because story is something that sticks with people. So if you develop that skill of corporate storytelling, it can definitely skyrocket your career. So now comes the natural response that, okay, where is this corporate storytelling required? For example, if you are raising money for your venture or startups, that's a corporate storytelling. You see this frequently happening on Shark Tank. Similarly, if you're giving a client presentation, that is a corporate storytelling. If you are giving a presentation to your boss, that's a corporate storytelling. If you're creating any type of presentation, that is corporate storytelling. So now comes the natural question that how do I learn corporate storytelling? Well, first and foremost, you don't necessarily need to learn corporate storytelling. You need to learn storytelling. Now, every story has a certain format. For example, one of the formats that I use, it is called as SCAR framework. Now, SCAR simply means situation. C stands for challenge, A stands for action and R stands for result. So whenever I'm telling a story, so for example, I will give you an example that, okay, let's say that I'm telling a story as to how did I start a nonprofit organization. So I will say something like this, that when I was in my undergrad, I decided to start a nonprofit organization. Now, why did I do that? Because I was always very passionate about teaching kids. And from that perspective, I thought that if I can start a education based nonprofit, it can leave a lot of impact on the world. Now the challenge was, now the second part is challenge. Here, the challenge was that because I was an undergrad, I did not have a lot of money. I could not do advertising. I also did not know anything about fundraising. So this was a challenge that I was facing, that I was just a one person team. And in order to scale my vision and idea, I needed help. So what did I do? So here I will speak about actions. So action means that what steps did I take? So first and foremost, I went and asked my friends who were in college to volunteer their time on Saturday and Sunday with me to teach these underprivileged children at shelter homes. So that was one specific step that I took. And here I did not need to pay them anything. It was a social service. So they enthusiastically participated in this cause. Then I started featuring their stories through Facebook and other social media platforms that kind of created a wave and got more people into it. So from that perspective, I was able to quickly build a team of 
20 volunteers without spending too much money. And the result was that within a year, I was able to educate roughly 200 students. So I hope that you got the perspective as to how to exactly tell a story. Now go and experiment with the different frameworks that you can think of and accordingly align your best stories. So now comes the third skill, which is called as structured thinking. Now structured thinking simply means that you have the ability to think in buckets. For example, on the previous skill, when we were speaking about storytelling, how did I bucket my response? I divided it into four specific parts. One was situation, one was challenge, one was action, and one was result. So I'm speaking in different, different buckets. In McKinsey, this is called as MECI framework, mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive. I'll make a separate video sometime. But to cut the long story short, in the corporate world, you might sometimes get very complicated problem. So your boss might come to you and would say that, you know what, we have recently received this particular contract from this marketing company and they want us to create a marketing plan for this particular client, which is an automobile client. So how will you think about it? Just send me like a quick proposal by end of the day. Now, this is a complicated problem. How will you communicate it? So you have to think about it as to how to segment it. What exactly precise thing to incorporate? Now, this becomes highly complicated, but focusing on structured thinking is one area how you can improve. Now, if you think about some of the best thinkers of our time, for example, if you look at Benjamin Graham or if you look at Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, they all follow framework thinking. It's a very complicated subject, so I can't teach it through like a two minute video here. I have created a specific course. You can check the links in the description and comment box. But in case you don't want to avail it, completely cool. But please learn about structured thinking. It is a game changer for your career. I have given you one or two examples, but please build more upon it. The faster you are able to bucket complicated problems into simple actionable points into different different buckets, it becomes easier for you to express yourself, other people to understand you. It makes the messaging very clear. So please learn about the different type of structures that could exist and contextualize it according to your work. Then comes the fourth skill and it is called as networking. In corporate world, it is also called as bootlicking. Now there are many bootlickers who will do fabulously well in their careers by sucking up to their boss. You might be knowing many, do comment, name them in the comment section, like write the first name, don't write the entire name. Otherwise you will start new fights in the office, but networking or boot licking is yeah is one skill that can actually skyrocket your career and it can allow you definitely to make a lot of money now boot licking has a very negative connotation i can't tell you what boot licking is and how to do boot licking i in fact did not like all this about the corporate world therefore i left it but from a networking point of view which has a slightly more positive connotation i can give you some tips See, networking, according to me, is not an exercise where you are reaching out, Ki, mujhe job de do, right? This is my resume. Can you please review it and send me like a feedback in another five minutes? No, you can't make these type of demands to random people. No one is going to help you out. Networking is about figuring out a win-win. That is what networking is. If you're reaching out even to Jeff Bezos, and if you don't have anything to offer, guess what? He's not going to help you in any way. That is the precise nature of capitalism. These days, people are so pressed on time, so pressed on time that there is no way, absolutely no way that they can help you out in terms of figuring out your career moves, what you should be doing, how you should be writing your resume, vagera, vagera. that is not going to help you out. Whenever you are reaching out to any person from a networking point of view, the idea should always be A, to build a relationship and B, figuring out some kind of a win-win. Now, what is the meaning of building a relationship? Okay, so think about it this way that LinkedIn these days is a very easy platform to reach out to people. For example, if you go and search Akshat Srivastava on LinkedIn, in case if you haven't followed me on LinkedIn, do follow. I do write a lot of interesting posts on finance, on corporate world. So I write a series of things. You'll benefit a lot. So do follow me there. Now, just by following my post, you'll get a very easy, clear idea that what type of topics I am interested in. Now, if the idea for you is to reach out to me, what is it that you can do? Well, you need to figure out that how you can help me out, right? For example, and please do not try this on me. It is not going to work out. I'm teaching you how to apply this. Please don't apply it on me. So, okay, back to topic. So these days, it is very easy to research on a person. So for example, if you search my profile, figure out, read like 20, 30 posts, you will get an idea what type of stuff I am interested in. Now your job as a seeker of help that you want me to refer you to someone or you want me to review your resume, then what becomes your goal? Number one, to cultivate a relationship. So you go online, figure out that where can I help Akshat? For example, you read 20 of my posts and you'll say that, you know what Akshat, you have done this wonderfully well. How about you turn your LinkedIn post into a graphic? And here is a graphic that I've made. Now you have actually helped me out and you just simply say that you want, hey Akshat, loved reading your posts. 
And here is a quick graphic that I have made on this particular post that you have done. I found it to resonate really well with me. So I thought that maybe your audience will appreciate a graphical representation of it. I am attaching it. Let me know if it is helpful. That's it, right? You're not asking for anything. Guess what? If that post is really good and if you have made really nice graphics, I might use it because you have asked me to. And if I'm using it, then of course, now I'm obligated to return the favor. And that is the time where you can jump in and ask for a favor. So this is just one way how you can leverage the online world in order to build more healthy connections and figuring out win-wins. Okay, so the next skill on table is something called as global understanding. So, okay, what exactly is global understanding? Just to speak from personal experience. So I have lived in Singapore, I've worked there, I have traveled across different countries, continents. So what that has allowed me to do is that it has allowed me to interact, understand the viewpoint of different cultures. Now, when you come back to India after having some kind of global experience, even the startups here, they are trying to build global teams or are trying to reach out and build their presence across different countries. So from that perspective, they always want people who understand the global context. Now, what is the meaning of understanding global context? That you have some kind of exposure of interacting and engaging with people from outside India. You understand their culture. On top of that, you have a functional understanding of what is happening across different countries. So you can bring that area of expertise to your work in India. So if you ever get an opportunity to work abroad, if you get an opportunity to go on site, if you get an opportunity to do some internship or just a short term project outside India, definitely do take advantage of it. It is not as if that you're leaving India forever. No, nothing like this. You are just developing another global viewpoint. It's a skill set that you are developing, which can help you out further in your career. More importantly, what it does is that it adds a unique point to your resume. Now you have another additional point to speak about, right? Which makes you slightly different compared to your peers. So having this global viewpoint can definitely add a lot of value to your career and it can definitely increase your salary. So now comes the sixth skill, which is called as synthesizing. Now the meaning of synthesizing is that see there is a lot of data that you have to go through in order to prepare a research report or there is a lot of data that you will have to go through in order to give a presentation or you will generally have to analyze a lot of data what is it that you are trying to do well you are reading let's say 100 articles and by reading all these articles you have to prepare a one page summary this skill is called a synthesis that you are absorbing so much data and you are trying to condense it into one pager by adding all important points this is a skill that is tested out in specific industries like VC, private equity, management consulting. In fact, in management consulting firms like BCG, Bain, Vacancy, Dalberg, they give you cases and those cases are half an hour, 45 minute conversation. And towards the end, they ask you that, hey, summarize the case for me. So when they say summarize the case, what are they expecting you to do? They are expecting you to synthesize the case, summarize the case. That becomes a very, very important point. With excess amount of information available on every single topic, this becomes a very important skill going forward in the future. Not only the ability to synthesize is important, but also the speed at which you are able to absorb information becomes extremely critical. Because think about it this way, that if 100 units of information is flowing on any particular topic, 90-95 might be useless. And remainder 5% is where the magic lies and you should be able to absorb that 5% information, 5% useful information very, very quickly. And that is what separates people who grow in their corporate career very quickly versus people who do not grow in their career. So focus on synthesis. How exactly can you do it? Well, you need to analyze a lot of data. For example, if you're reading 100 articles, A, read in a very focused manner. For example, today, if you're setting a date that, that today I'm going to learn about electric vehicle industry. You're reading 100 articles. Now, towards the end of the day, Think yourself that, okay, what is that one page summary I'll create out of it. If you keep on practicing, then your brain will become very, very sharp in terms of absorbing information. Okay, so the seventh skill on the table is called as negotiations. Now, negotiation simply means that, you know, if you're going and negotiating with the HR, give me a de do, salary bada do. All these are what? All these are negotiations. It directly impacts the salary that you're getting and therefore it can impact your job outcomes quite a lot. So what is the meaning of negotiations? You will say that, okay, it is a tug of war. Ki yaar, HR se mene bola. I told the HR that increase my salary by 15,000. The HR said, no, I will not increase your salary even by one rupee. So either I'm going to win or HR is going to win. No, that is incorrect way of looking at it. The goal of negotiation is very simple that it is to reach a fair and equitable point. For example, if you're negotiating for a salary, number one, you yourself should be clear why your salary should be increased. 
गुड आंसर इज नॉट कि इन्फ्लेशन बढ़ गया है इकोनॉमी में देर फॉर माई सैलरी शुड इंक्रीज ये थियरेटिकली दैट इज राइट बट यू नीड टू जस्टिफाई वाई यू डिजर्व अ सैलरी राइज इट कुड बी दैट योर परफॉर्मेंस हैज बीन रियली गुड सो दैट इज अ वेरी वैलिड पॉइंट टू आस्क फॉर अ सैलरी राइज ऑन टॉप ऑफ दैट एवरी वन इज गेटिंग अ सैलरी हाइक और द कंपनी हैज रन फेयरली वेल बंपर क्वार्टर मेड क्रेजी अमाउंट ऑफ मनी सो ऑफकोर्स इफ द कंपनी इज मेकिंग लाइक क्रेजी अमाउंट ऑफ मनी थोड़ा पैसा दे दो इंप्लॉइज को राइट सर दैट्स अ नेचुरल आस्क ऑन टॉप ऑफ दैट द टाइमिंग ऑफ नेगोशिएशन इज आल्सो वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एग्जांपल इमेजिन दिस दैट इन 2019 योर कंपनी डिड एक्सीडिंगली वेल इन टर्म्स ऑफ रेवेन्यूज एंड प्रॉफिट्स एंड योर रिव्यू विद द एचआर वाज कमिंग अप नाउ सडनली कोविड हिट राइट कंपनी मेड क्रेजी अमाउंट ऑफ मनी बट कोविड हिट एंड नाउ द कंपनी नोस दैट इन व्हाट नेक्स्ट एक दो साल आर गोइंग टू बी रियली रियली बैड इज दैट अ गुड टाइम टू नेगोशिएट फॉर योर सैलरी probably no right so from that perspective timing becomes a very important aspect third and finally there are specific negotiation techniques for example one of the techniques that i talk about in my course is called as batna right which means that best alternate to not agree what does that mean in simple terms it means that for example you went to your hr and said that increase my salary by 15000 Okay, now if the HR says no, then what is your alternate? Well, if you agree to this point, then what is your next best alternate? Your next best alternate could be that you already have a job offer in hand, or you are going to quit. Whatever it could be, you should always go into a negotiation with a very clear understanding of what your batna B A T N A is. If you have a very clear batna that you are happy with, then you can take hard stands during a negotiation. Now, negotiation is one such aspect that we can go back and forth, and I can again create like a five-hour video on this. But I hope you get a perspective as to why negotiation is such an important aspect to your career growth. Then comes the next point, which is called as personal branding. So these days, if you open up LinkedIn, most likely your CEO is also there talking about a lot of random stuff. right about like you know leadership this that spending time with family wagera wagera all that good good stuff why are they doing it the answer is that they are looking to build their personal brand now when a ceo speaks about their books speaks about their family speaks about the things that they value are they speaking about the company no they are not outlining what the company does they are building their own brand why are they building their own brand for the simple fact that if tomorrow they have to leave their job and move to some other company that personal brand is something that they will take with them a classic case in point is ashmeer grover that huge problems with like the company that he had founded issues with boards chori ka aarop wagera wagera but he created his personal brand moved on to something else so to cut the long story short everyone these days is focused on building personal brands so what should you do you should also build your personal brand now you're not competing with your company ceo but doing basic basic stuff for example first step i'll have for you is that please start using linkedin please go and speak about things that you're knowledgeable on for example if you know a lot about product development that what general challenges do companies face when they are developing their product which areas do they go wrong how do product developers exactly solve the problem how is the product development industry getting shaped in india and outside there are so many topics around product development product management that you can speak about and it can act as your personal brand because people will then start thinking that you know a lot about product development product management and eventually if you are looking to switch your company switch your job it can definitely help you out okay so the next skill on the table is called as deep work now i think it was mr narayan murthy who said that you know what people who are staying back in office till like 7 8 pm you guys are simply inefficient i'm just paraphrasing him that he said something similar to that let me know the exact quote but he said something on these lines and he is absolutely right so that is not a very healthy way of getting work done now we live in a world where there is so much distraction yaar phone se distraction whatsapp aa gaya wagera wagera ipl chal raha hai usi mein lage pade hain so the point is that there are infinite opportunities to get distracted in fact according to a study the human average attention span back in the year 2000 was roughly close to 12 seconds now it has fallen to 8.4 seconds so in 15 years there has been a dip of roughly 33% on the human attention span going forward with more and more distractions what do you think is going to happen to our attention level it is going to come down what type of people are going to do well in their careers not just in corporate career business career whatever career people who have the ability to focus and get things done so please develop the ability to do deep work now what is the best piece of advice i can give you to do deep work stay away from phone 
I have started using a dumb phone. So whatever recording I'm doing, I do it on iPhone. That's my work phone. But my primary phone on which I speak with people, I only use it for sending SMSs and doing phone calls. I am not even on WhatsApp. My teams might be on WhatsApp, but I'm using dumb phone. And this is one of the best productivity hacks that I've figured out so far. Okay, so the next skill on the table is called as business understanding skill. Well, there are two types of skills on the table. One is called as the I skill and the other is called as T skills. So when I say I, imagine an I being drawn out. This indicates depth. For example, again, let's pick the example of software developer. That let's say that you are a software developer. Now, what is your skill? If you have an I skill, it might mean that you are an expert. When it comes to Java, .NET, C, C++, different programming language, you have an expertise. There is massive depth in whatever you are doing. T skills means that there is a wide area that you know about. And also there is an area where there is depth. The depth of the T indicates the depth of your skill. And it also means that you have a breadth of skills. This becomes extremely important as you grow higher in your corporate career. Many people say, I have engineering degree career. Why should I even bother about learning about business? Why should I even know about business? Why should I even bother with things like effective communication, client communication? Well, because you need to develop T. If you're not developing a T, you are doing yourself a disservice. You will be paid super high salaries in very other rare circumstances. But in majority of the cases, if you want to earn very high salaries, then developing a T makes a lot of sense. You don't need to inculcate like Jeff Bezos level of business understanding, but knowing basics that how do clients think? How do your customers think about your product? What are the primary challenges in sales that your product is facing? All these are basic, basic business related questions that you must understand about the industry in which you are operating. Just because you are an engineer or you are an engine designer or whatever specialized skill that is, that is great. That indicates the depth of the T, but at the same time, develop a little bit of breadth so that you can have broader conversations with general people. Okay, so then comes the final tip that you need to be a likable person. Now, what is the meaning of likable person? Well, it simply means that if you are not there in the office, what is it that people are saying about you? If such a conversation is going on behind your back, then you are not probably a very likable person. You need to become a likable person. Now, I can't tell you how to fake it. But genuinely, helping people, helping colleagues, if you can help them out in some way, if you're genuinely nice, if you are operating with the viewpoint of not competing with everyone, if you understand that you are skilled enough, you can work hard and grow in your career. If you are a satisfied person or like somewhat satisfied person, you will be very much likable. Now, of course, out of 100 people, there will always be like 10, 15 people who will hate you. So about them, just forget. But in general, try to be a nice person, a likable person. Likeability is your X factor, which goes on to add to all the other different things that I've spoken about. If you are likable, then the chances are that even if you are 70, 80% skilled compared to other people, you will go very, very high in your career. There are certain things, for example, helping others, not being a dogla person, being reliable, that you say that you will do something and you end up doing it. All these are basic primary traits of being a good human and being likable. If you are likable, it is going to be a game changer. I hope you enjoyed this video. Here is a recap of all the 11 skills that I spoke about. Do go through the list. Do tell me which skill you are going to focus the most. And I'm going to see you the next time very soon. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon.